live from Studio West, joined by former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. Good morning, Governor. How are you? I'm doing great, Hugh. Thanks for having me. Are you enjoying retirement? <laughs> well, I'm starting to get used to it. It's been almost two weeks now, and uh, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but we're keeping busy. Now, Governor, you're a Ravens fan, so I expect you to answer this question the way that Lamar Jackson answers a Miles Garrett rush, which is to get out of the pocket and do everything you can to not answer this. But I saw you do this yesterday, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask it ten times. Will you support whoever the nominee of the Republican Party is in 2024? I, I imagine that will be the case. I'm, I'm anxious to find out who the nominee is going to be. Well, that, I'm assuming... Uh, that no one knows, but it might be Donald Trump. So you're saying if it's Donald Trump, you'll be willing to support him? Yeah, as I've said, uh, you, I don't think it is going to be Donald Trump, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge or jump off that bridge when we come to it. Now, wait a minute. That was a little Lamar Jackson. Earlier you said you'd support the nominee, and then you said we'd cross the bridge. I'm not letting go of the leg. I'm like Miles well, Garrett. If Trump yeah, is the nominee, <laughs> does Larry Hogan support him? Yeah, I just don't think he's going to be the nominee, but I'll support the nominee. There you go. That's what I want. Now, talk to me about when you're going to decide. Nikki Haley is in the news today as likely to announce before February 15th. When is Larry Hogan going to make his decision? Well, it doesn't come as a surprise. I mean, you know, Nikki's been uh, working on this for about five years, and we, I think we all expected she would run. She's a friend. She's a great was a great governor, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to see her in the race. Um, you know, I, I think the more voices, uh, the more people out there, the better, especially people that have some executive experience as governors. I think there are a number of us. Uh, but I'm seriously considering it. I don't have a time frame, but it, we're going to make a decision fairly soon. Uh, that that Would that be by the end of the month, Governor? Uh, it's possible, but uh, we, we don't really have a, a deadline on it. All right, talk to me a little bit. I was out at the RNC winter meeting, and the theme that unites all Republicans is education reform. Now, you dealt with a deep blue legislature run by teachers' unions in large part. So I don't think yep. you were able to do much on school choice, but how much does that issue matter to Republicans in 2024? Well, it matters a lot. It also matters to Democrats, believe it or not. And we did have some success on school choice, in spite of the fact that we had a huge teachers' union, very powerful, and a 70% uh, progressive, far-left Democratic legislature. We didn't do all the things we wanted to, but we pushed the school choice initiative. We had scholarships for for kids to attend the, the school of their choice in Maryland. We, we, we pushed for both public and private uh, school uh, charter schools. Uh, we, we provided scholarships to thousands of kids to go to the school of their choice and give them an opportunity for the first time. But it, this was not just popular with, uh, you know, Republican primary base voters. It was even more popular among black voters. Uh, and residents of Baltimore City, uh, because they're the ones that are in the persistently failing schools and desperately want an opportunity for their kids. Uh, I, I hope everyone hears you say that and they adopt that. The uh, The Hogan Ducey show at the Republican Governors Association was always entertaining to me. You're going to get back into politics. Ducey has said he's not. Uh, there is a problem in Washington, D.C., which you will be aware of, which is the Chamber of Commerce has has crashed and burned and nobody pays attention to it. Do you think Ducey would come to D.C. and run the chamber if they asked him? You know, I that's a great question. I'm a huge fan of Doug Ducey. He's a good friend and obviously has a great business background. I think he'd be terrific at running the Chamber of Commerce. I, I, I haven't spoken to him about whether he would take it or not, but he, he'd certainly be the kind of person that I think uh, could give some leadership to the business community. and. It'd be a great choice. Are I, I you, certainly... You've worked with the business community in Maryland, both in Baltimore and throughout the rest of the state. Are you aware of how badly the chamber at the, inside the Beltway has crashed and burned? Well, there's no question about that. Um, you know, it, it, some of the local chambers still do a pretty good job, but they're, 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 they seem to be uh, lacking direction in Washington and sometimes not. it doesn't appear to be focused on issues that they should be focused on. Uh, look, my whole uh, eight years as governor, I'm a lifelong small business owner who right. ran for governor to turn the economy around. And, and I changed the entire mission of state government to be unabashedly pro-business and pro-jobs. And you know, we cut, we got a progressive legislature to cut taxes eight years in a row by $4.8 billion. We had the biggest economic turnaround in America, went from 49th out of 50 states to number six. And we eliminated a $5 billion deficit and turned it into a $5 billion surplus. So we've got more businesses open, more people working. And we did that 
in the most hostile place anywhere uh, uh, with, with a very heavily Democratic legislature in both houses. So it can be done, uh, but it's not easy. And uh, you've, you've really got to focus and, and, uh, and push hard to get these things accomplished. Let me ask you about Kevin McCarthy. Speaker McCarthy had negotiations with President Biden yesterday. He will not tell people what he wants to cut. I approve of that strategy. What does Larry Hogan think about that, about negotiating behind closed doors as opposed to through the press? I, you know, I agree with the strategy, actually. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in that, look, it, it can't be my way or the highway. Uh, the President Biden saying he's not, not, not going to negotiate at all and uh, and, and you know, Speaker McCarthy not negotiating at all, but I think you know, sitting down together. If you're not going to have real discussions, then they're not going to be very productive. So, I, I think sometimes you can make more progress uh, reaching uh, common sense uh, agreements and moving the ball forward if you're not negotiating in the in the media. And you know, it's it's how we were able to get our overwhelmingly Democratic legislature to go along with some things. We had we had a lot of discussions where we each had very strong opinions and. We disagreed, you know, on a lot of big issues, but we sat down and listened to one another and tried to push toward, you know, solving the problem. And I, I think that's what should happen with the speaker and the president, because this is a, you know, refusing to, to negotiate is not leadership. I mean, you can't get anything done if you're not willing to uh, listen and find common ground. It's not an easy problem to solve, but it has to get solved. Well said. Uh, now, now, Governor, I want to turn to the other issue that divided the RNC, or at least was a discussion in the hallway quite a lot. On the spectrum of abortion rights legislation, Democrats support radical abortion rights legislation. I call it due date abortion, abortion right up until the baby is delivered. Some Republicans favor radical no abortion uh, statutes, including no exception for uh, rape and incest. All Republicans support the life of the mother. What does Larry Hogan think ought to be the model statute, and should the federal government put it forward, or should it be up to the states to decide? Well, I, I am a states' rights uh, guy and always have been, and I think that the states do have and should have uh, the right to place reasonable restrictions on abortion, and, and that's, that's where we are right now. That, um, I also think that uh, sometimes uh, some Democrats are you know, far too extreme, uh, on the uh, pro-abortion side, and I think that sometimes Republicans make the, st the same mistake on the on the on the flip side. And I think most Americans uh, do not believe in uh, abortion up to the moment of birth, and uh, or even late-term abortions. Uh, but they're not in favor of outlawing all abortions, and they or they they do agree with exceptions. Uh, so I think again, it's, it sounds like you know some people are very polarized and very strong. Never happen or should always happen. But I think most people in America, you know, have a more nuanced position where they, they think, you know, we need to think, find a, a reasonable uh, way to solve this, this really big issue. Now, Governor, I agree with that. And that was temperate and nuanced. Debate stages don't allow for temperate or nuanced. I remember ABC's George Stephanopoulos asking Mitt Romney if he wanted to ban birth control. And it was just such a weird question that the former Massachusetts governor now Utah senator was stunned by it because it was so stupid. Uh, yeah. How should it be even a topic for debate stages? Because everyone needs about five minutes to lay out their policy and the people can compare and contrast. I just think it's a gotcha question on debate stages. What does Larry Hogan think? Well, look, I think uh, you, you've got to be able to answer any question on a debate stage. But I, I agree. It's not the, if you look at polling, it's not the issue that people are deciding on. It's far down the path. If people are concerned about the economy. They're concerned about crime. They're concerned about education. You know, not, not to say it's not an important issue, but it's not on the top of anybody's mind, really. Uh, and it, it's not what most people are making their mind up on. But yes, if, if, if somebody wants to ask that question, you got to have an answer. And I've been on debate stages and answered the question. And it, it's, I think everybody expects you to say yes or no. I'm I'm, uh, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-choice. It's not, you know, you have to give the real answer. How do you really feel? This is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to abortion, but, you know, I'm not for, uh, you know, putting people in jail for, you know, getting a, an abortion in some of those circumstances. And I'm, you know, I'm not for, you know, federal funding of abortion or, you know, abortion on demand up to the moment of birth. So it's, it's like any other issue. You have to tell them what you really think. Uh, what is the, uh, this is a way out there question, how much time should a candidate on a debate stage be given to answer a question that is difficult to answer? 75 seconds, 90 seconds, what do you think? 
Yeah, I'm not an expert on that, but um, you know, I, I I don't like when you you really don't get a, a substantive or intelligent answer when you're it's too short. So enough time to kind of articulate the, the real position is important. I, I I couldn't agree with you more, Governor Larry Hogan. Gotcha, Miles Garrett got Lamar Jackson, and I appreciate your answering the question. Keep coming back, Larry Hogan. I will be right back, America. Stay tuned to the Hugh Hewitt Show.